coat calling. Kepper had to go out with Mum, but he was busy playing with the others. Beth sent a note telling him to hurry up. She tucked it into Floppy's collar and sent him off to find Kipper. Wilf and Wilma saw what Biff was doing. They called Floppy over and took the note out of his collar. When they opened it, they saw it. They saw it. It what? Well, they saw it. They saw it was not an ordinary note. It was in code. They both stared at the message. What did it mean? Wilma thought the message was part of the game. She was sure it was telling Kipper to run to their house because they weren't guarding it. They mustn't let Kipper see the note. We'll hang on. We'll hang on. The, we'll hang on to this, said Wilma. You're just guessing, Wilma. Can't you, you You're just guessing, said Wilf. Can't you see that? I wish she could, thought Floppy, before Kipper... I wish she could, thought Floppy, before Kipper gets into big trouble. The key on Floppy's collar started to glow. Suddenly, Wilf, Wilma and Floppy were pulled into a vortex of brilliant colours and lights. They were turning round and round, faster and faster. They looked around and found themselves in a wood by a river. An arrow flew into a tree above Wilma's head. Where did that come from? she gasped. Wilf pointed across to the other river bank. Over there, I think, he said, as a shadowy figure disappeared into the trees. Wilf pulled the arrow from the tree trunk. There was a piece of paper attached, so he unrolled it. The paper was covered the paper was covered in different pictures. It must be some sort of message, said Wilma, peering over Wilf's shoulder. It's in code, replied Wilf. They looked like boats in water. They look like these look like boats in water, said Wilf. This is a crown. This is people fighting, gasped Wilma, pointing to one corner of the paper. Are you sure? replied Wilf. I'm cor of course I'm sure, replied Wilma. The people over there are coming in boats to fight the, the people over there. Over here. Let's get out of here. They started to run, but then suddenly, stop, came a loud voice. Too late. They had been seen by a guard carrying a sharp spear. This way, he commanded. He led them to an enormous place, and there on the throne, at the end of a very long room, sat the king. Look, whispered Wilf. He's wearing a crown, like the one in, this, in the picture. Like the one in the picture. Wilma looked worried. This must mean that the king was in terrible danger. The king's aunt, Mystic Morbid, could see into the future. Aunt Morbid says you have a message from... Aunt Morbid says you have a message for me, said the king. The people across the river are going to attack you, said Wilma. The king was alarmed. He'd always thought the people over there looked very nice and friendly. Are you sure? he asked. But before Wilf could say a word, Wilma replied, yes, we're sure. The king took them to meet Mystic Morbid. As soon as she saw the king and the chip and the children she started wailing whoa whoa she cried i see terrible whoa the children stared at her but floppy was more interested in the delicious bones lying on her table mm. the child says the the river people are going to attack us said the king what did the bones say morbid dropped the bones on the table and studied their pattern the bones say she started looking again. Where one? Where one bone short? She cried. Wilf grabbed the missing bone from Floppy's mouth. Sorry, he said, giving the bone to Morbid. She threw the bones again. The bones say trouble, she announced. The king ordered his army to gather in the woods. Wilf, Wilma, Floppy and Mystic, and Mystic Morbid all followed him as he set off to meet them. There they are, said the king proudly. Wilf and Wilma looked to where he was pointing. But there's no one there, said Wilma. The king raised his arm and suddenly all the trees and bushes came to life. Wow, said Wilma. The 
king turned to Morbid. When, when will they attack? When will they attack? He asked. Wealth was frowning. If they attack, he muttered to Wilma. Then he walked up to the king. Your majesty, he began. I think you ought to know that I'm not sure. But Wilma interrupted. We'll find out when they, when, we'll find out when they're going to attack, she told the king. So Wilf and Wilma disguised themselves as trees and crossed over to the river. They watched as, as the river people raised their arms and walked towards each other. Wilf gasped. What I see is people dancing. You got it all wrong. The picture is not drunk. The picture, that picture's not a drawing of a battle at all. Wilma looked horrified. We have to tell the king, she cried. Wilma raced back over the river while Wilf carried the disguises trying to keep up. Prepare to sign the attack, shouted the king as the river people got into their boats. No, wait, cried Wilma. I was wrong. They're not coming to fight. They're coming to dance. The king smiled. What a relief, he said. Come on, Morbid, we're going to dance. Mystic Morbid was so happy that she even tossed the bone to Floppy. You can have this, she said. I'm going dancing. Wilma breathed a sigh of relief. Thank goodness we worked it out in time, she said. Wilf looked at Floppy. The key's glowing, he said. We're going, thought Floppy. Back in the garden, Wilma had another look at the message from Beth. Maybe I better check this message again, she said. She and Wilf stared hard at the pictures. At the pi she and Wilf stared hard at the pictures. Then Wilma said then Wilma smiled. She worked it out. Beth's telling Kipper his mum wants him in the house, she said. Quick floppy, we better take it to him. But Floppy was too busy staring at his bone from Mystic Morbid. Ollie, no. Sorry about that. But Wilma, well, Beth's telling Kipper his mum wants him in the house. She said, quick, Floppy, you'd better take it to him. But Floppy was too busy staring at his bone for Mystic Morbid. Wilma laughed. What did a bone say, Floppy? Floppy looked at her. I haven't a clue, he thought. The end.